Hello gamers, this is Sai and welcome back to Which Way Games. If you remember my last video I said that this week wouldn't be 2D, well... It isn't, don't worry. Groovy. And with that being said, let's get on with the video. The PlayStation, Sony's first console. I'm sure most of you know the deal between Nintendo and Sony to create a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo. However, this never came to be, but just think for a moment, had this deal happened, would we have the PlayStation or even the Nintendo 64? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Anyway, let's carry on. The PlayStation was released in Japan in December of 1994 and the rest of the world in the later part of 1995. This great console took up residence under many gamers' TVs in the mid to late 90s, as well as sharing space with the Nintendo 64 a year later. Both consoles had some really good games, but I'm mainly talking about the PlayStation in this video. As you can see, I have mine as well as a few others, including the Nintendo 64. But like I said, this video isn't about the Nintendo 64, we will have to wait for that. Going back to the PlayStation, as you can see, it had a simple design. With its top loading lid opening and me being a big kid, I always thought I was feeding the PlayStation whenever I put in a game. <laughs> Almost took my finger off. Gamers had grown up with the 8-bit and 16-bit consoles, but had now become more mature and were looking for games that suited them better. In its time, the PlayStation had some great games made for it. Games such as Metal Gear Solid, Silent Hill, Gran Turismo, and the Resident Evil series. These are just a handful of what's available from its massive library of games. No, I haven't forgotten Miss Croft. I can give you two reasons why the Tomb Raider series was such a success. Exploring and shooting, what do you think I was going to say? As I was saying about the PlayStation, there are some games that seem to have been forgotten about. One game I played this week might have some gamers going, oh yeah, I remember that, while others will just say, Sai, what you want about? Well, the game I'm going to show you is Shiny Entertainment's MDK. Shiny Entertainment was a video game developer known for being the creator of Earthworm Jim. That crazy worm with a happy trigger finger and his super suit. Ha! Huh, easy laugh for some. Anyway. MDK's plot attack, Kurt Hectic, a janitor, reluctantly becomes Earth's saviour from an alien invasion by the Streamriders. Invading Earth with one thing in their mind, taking Earth's natural resources from themselves. They do this by using city-sized vehicles named Minecrawlers. Looks more like a lawnmower to me if I'm honest. Kurt is aided by his boss Dr Hawkins and the two-legged or four-armed dog known as Max. I say aided, what I actually mean is that Dr Hawkins and Max stay on the gym dandy while Kurt must infiltrate the Minecrawlers on his own and then find the pilot, kill them, and return to the gym dandy in time for breakfast. Look me a kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. Out of curiosity, I'd like to see how this advertises on the TV. MDK. What do you think of that then? Now we know Kurt is a janitor, but what about Dr. Hawkins and Max, or as the Doc likes to call him, Bones? Guessing the Doc is a fan of the original Star Trek with Captain Kirk. Dr. Hawkins is genius, but could also be insane, and as for Max, well, turns out he's a robotic dog created by Dr. Hawkins. Max looks well armed with a gun in each hand and a smoking cigar. You would have thought he would be the main character, but apparently Max is more interested in tending the garden. It won't be until MDK2 that you can play as him, as well as the Doctor. But why a dog? Why not a cat? Or even a hamster? MDK is a relatively short game with 6 levels in total. These levels can be finished within an hour, but that depends on the difficulty setting selected. At the start of each stage, Dr Hawkins tells us where the aliens are causing havoc. This screen reminded me of my science teacher when I was at school, including crazy hair and dodgy eyebrows, as well as gloating the fact he got run over by a milk float. Or as he called them, the silent killers. Each mission begins with Kurt doing his best Top Gun impression towards the minecrawlers below. Yeah, that would probably have me screaming at the top of my lungs, crying and wishing I was at home in the man cave. Obviously, Kurt doesn't become a pancake thanks to the ribbon parachute of his coal suit. It kind of reminds me of the symbiote Venom, although I'm sure he would have a much better looking parachute. But then, what do you expect from the creators of Earthworm Jim? On each of the minecrawlers, you'll pretty much adopt the playing style of if it moves, shoot it. If it doesn't move, shoot it anyway. Each level has wide open areas that Kirk can access either by foot, 
surfboard or by sliding down on his back. Good thing his coil suit is made up of a Kevlar armor material or he might end up in the hospital with friction burns. Ow. One thing I have noticed is that the character sprite of Kurt is 2D while the rest of the level is 3D. I will get away from 2D, I do promise. Like I was saying earlier, the mine crawlers are essentially massive cities, each with their own army and leader. Now, you would have thought that each leader would be a towering mountain of evil, able to wipe Kurt away with a single hit. Well, you'd be wrong. I mean, just look at this. Yeah, I'm guessing that leader has to use a booster seat without the controls of the mine crawler. Going back to Kurt and his coil suit, he has a gun that can be attached to his helmet to create a sniper rifle. Being able to zoom in and see the enemies with no loss of detail was great, especially for the PlayStation. Although in this mode, Kurt doesn't have a lot of movement like he does in third person. While in sniper mode, Kurt can only step side to side, which is all well and good, but you'll have no idea if an enemy is within your vicinity until it's too late. But getting that headshot is satisfying, even when Kurt is miles away. That's one hell of a shot. The other function of his gun is an unlimited supply of bullets. I mean, just look. See me hold the control and press the button down. See what I mean, it's completely unlimited. Is this gun the masterpiece of Dr. Hawkins? Obviously, you can collect an upgrade to this gun, a faster, more powerful version, but only for a limited amount of bullets before it runs out. Other collectibles are grenades, a wonderfully drawn blow-up decoy of Kurt, and a few special bombs. One of these is the world's most interesting bomb, and the other the world's smallest nuke. The world's most interesting bomb is a box which beckons the enemies to gather round it before it opens and explodes, while the world's smallest nuke goes... Now, is MDK a platformer or a shoot 'em up like Doom, for example? I'd have to say it's a bit of both, with the platform sections and the shooting sections spread apart nicely. In addition to these, there are several mini games in MDK. Like I said, all levels start out with Kurt skydiving onto the minecrawlers, while some levels have a bombing run, boarding a glider, or dropping bombs on enemies. Also, another great touch is the chance for Kurt to disguise himself as a sentry robot to deceive the enemy to help him progress through the level or even collect a certain type of bomb. On the final level, Max falls to earth while Kurt is skydiving. You will notice poor Max as he plummets ahead of you. Max ends up being captured by the boss of the Stream Riders. This boss is called Gluck, quite a fitting name for someone with a belly like that. Personally, I'd call him Fatty McButterpants, that's just me. As you can see, he keeps Max suspended in the air for his amusement. Now, Kurt's got to get in there and save his friend and save the day. But I'm not going to show you that, because I don't want to spoil the game too much for you. The visuals for MDK are great for the PlayStation, even if it does appear a bit blocky, but I think it adds to the charm of the game. Obviously, MDK was released on the PC, so expect better visuals on there. Yes, I can hear some of you saying, Peasants, I bring news! Join me in PC gaming and ascend to Godhood! Now, would I say MDK is a bit of a gem, or is it a game that time has forgotten about? I think for a select few, MDK is a bit of a gem, but for others, this game may have passed them by. The boxed PC version is somewhat a bit hard to find, but the PlayStation version of MDK is pretty easy to get hold of. I think I paid £2 for mine. The MDK is definitely one for any gamer's collection, especially if you enjoy the humour like Earthworm Jim. The controls are simple, and movement is done through the D-pad on the PlayStation controller, but if you have the analogue controller, you can use the sticks to move Kurt. I had super fun playing MDK and can honestly say I only died once, which surprised me considering I've not played this game for a while. The feeling of finishing the game in one sitting felt great, however I want to go and play MDK 2 on the PlayStation 2, and I know that game is a lot longer so I'll have to come back to that. If you fancy saving planet Earth from alien scum then give MDK a look, I promise you you won't be disappointed. Now some of you might be wondering why I haven't given this game a rating. Well it's because I've been going through my collection of games and found that I don't actually own many bad games. So if I kept my rating system, all my videos would have buy it, buy it, buy it, play it, buy it, play it, buy it. You get the picture. I'll have to go find some really bad games just to see if they truly are. I'm sure being dragged over hot coals and then launched from a catapult will be more fun. Come back next week for another PlayStation game, or I may even do a Nintendo 64 game. Or to really get you thinking, I might do a Dreamcast game or a GameCube game. Who knows? Either way, thank you for watching, and see you next game. We'll be right